These are some selections of the Battle of the Side Cafe. The town itself is dreary. Not much is there except the cotton mill. The two room house is where the workers live. A few peach trees. A church with two colored windows. And a miserable main street, only a hundred yards long. On Saturdays, the tenants from the nearby farms come in for a day of talk and trade. Otherwise, the town is lonesome and sad, like a place that is estranged from all other places in the world. The nearest train stop is Society City, and the Greyhound and White Bus Lines use the Fox Falls Road, which is a few miles away. The winters are raw and sharp, the summers white with glare and fiery hot. If you walk down the main street on an August afternoon, there is nothing to do. The largest building in the center of the town is boarded up completely and leans so far to the right that it is bound to collapse at any moment. This house is very old. There is about it a cracked curious look that is puzzling until you realize that at one time and long ago the right side of the front porch had been painted and the painting was left unfinished so that one portion of the house is dingier and darker than the other. The building looks completely deserted. However, on the second floor there is a window that is not boarded. Sometimes in the late afternoons, when the heat is at its worst, a hand will open the shutter and a face will look down to the town. It is a face like the terrible dim faces known in dreams, sexless and white, and two great crossed eyes which turn inward so sharply that they seem to be exchanging with each other one long and secret gaze of grief. The face lingers at the window for an hour or so. Then the shutters close once more, and there is not likely to be a soul on the main street. These August afternoons, when the shift is finished, there is absolutely nothing to be done. You might as well walk down to the Fox Falls Highway and listen to the chain gang. However, in this very town, there was once a cafe, and this old boarded up house was unlike any other place for many miles around. There were tables with cloths and napkins, colored streamers from electric fans, and gatherings on Saturday nights. The owner of this place was Miss Amelia Evans, but the person who was most responsible for the Success and gaiety of the place was a hunchback called Cousin Lima. One other person had a part of the story of the cafe. He was the former husband of Miss Amelia, a terrible character who returned to the town after a long time in the penitentiary, caused ruin, and then went on his way again. The cafe has long since been closed, but is still remembered.